In Isaiah 55, we read that as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will re not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is living and active. Thank you that your word does not go out except it accomplish what your will is, Lord. And so, Lord, open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, and to soften our hearts to receive what you have for us today through your word. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. So our scripture reading for today, we're still in the Old Testament. Last week I preached from Numbers today. I'm preaching for Job. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> Let us hear the word of God. In the land of Uz, where there lived a man named, whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Then we jump to chapter 2, 1 through 10. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present themselves before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give up all he has for his own life. But now, stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must not spare, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So are you all fired up to hear about suffering? <laughs> If we're honest, no one wants to suffer, right? If there was a sign-up sheet, we, nobody would be saying, yep, send me, that's, that's my goal. And often we avoid the pieces that are uncomfortable, the things that may make us question. You know, some would tell you that if you sign on with God as our son Emerson did um, this past week. You say yes to Jesus, come into my life, that everything is going to go smoothly. There's not going to be any problems. You're not going to hurt. God wants you to prosper, some preachers will tell you. They'll say, you know, he wants, kind of like Oprah when she was on, you get a car and you get a car and you get a house. That's just not consistent with the way things work. 
That's not God's plan or God's purpose. As much as we would like it to be, if we remember, Jesus said to his disciples, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. If Jesus had pain and suffering, how do we think we're going to escape it? The title of my message for today, as you see in the bulletin, is Trusting God Even When We Don't Understand. That's not an easy prescription, is it? Trusting God when we get that cancer diagnosis, or an Alzheimer's diagnosis, or muscular dystrophy. Trusting God when a hurricane comes and wipes out an entire community, homes and businesses, lives. When there is suffering and pain and heartache, we don't like to think about suffering, but the reality is, as my executive director, as we were doing a startup uh, this week or a restart, he said that one of his mentors once said, most people are either going in to a suffering period or crisis in the midst of one or coming out of one. And that kind of sounds bleak, right? And you're like, okay, we came to church this morning. You know, we, we were looking to be inspired. We were looking to, to have something to hold on to carry us through the week. What are you doing? It's kind of that reality check. And when we look at Job, we can look at it and say, oh my goodness. If you read, and I, I encourage you this week, journey through Job so you get the whole picture. You know, I started at the prologue, and it shows that Job was not an Israelite. But we see that Job had sons and daughters. He was a wealthy man. He had all kinds of property. And Satan, being in God's presence, said, it's only because you give him good things that he worships you. And yet... God puts limits, right? He allowed him to wipe out everything that Job had, all the material and familial connections, right? That's devastating. But we want to also note that there were limits. In the first part, he said, you know what? No, just you can do that. And the enemy is like, okay, fine. He held his own, he still worships you. But skin for skin, he's like, right? He's saying, if you, you hurt his physical body, if he isn't physically in pain, he's going to curse you. And yet, Job doesn't. Job holds on to who God is, who he knows him to be. He trusts him even in the midst of, he doesn't know what's going on, right? He just knows he's sitting in an ash heap. He's lost all this stuff, and then kind of the, the final piece of, of twisting the knife, his wife looks at him and goes, you know what, just curse God and die. What's the point? Sometimes maybe you feel that way. You're facing a hard time and you're not sure how you're going to get through it. It's frightening to get a diagnosis. It's frightening when things happen that are out of your control. And the world will say, huh, well, where is your God? Does he really care? That's why it's so important for us 
to know the word of God. To really, from the beginning to the end, to be familiar, not with just what someone chooses to preach on, on a Sunday morning. We need to be in the word so that we know the character of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever should believe shall not die but will have eternal life. God doesn't promise that the road is going to be easy, but he does promise to walk with us. One of my favorite hymns is in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other is never known. He walks with me and he talks with me. When we have a relationship with God, it's not going to be all smooth sailing. But God promises that he's going to be with us, whether it's on that mountaintop, yay, got the degree, you know, won the championship, whatever that might be, as well as down in the pit Amen. when we're struggling, when we're not sure which way is up. God is with us. His character doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we think of other scriptures, we think of the even if, right? Our fears and our frustrations and our pain and our suffering, it's easy, you know, we feel these feelings that are overwhelming. And we can lose sight. And we look down and we look within ourselves. And God gave us feelings. But we don't want to be controlled by those feelings. When we're controlled by those feelings, we respond in ways that lack integrity. Here Job, despite everything he faced, responded with integrity. He says at one point, are we only to accept the good that God gives us? Do we not acknowledge the fullness of life that there are tough times? And yet, we don't face them alone. We have a God that's bigger than anything. And yes, he works sometimes or doesn't choose to move sometimes in the ways we hope. And yet, we can stand on his promises as we sang earlier. We cry out, precious Lord, take my hand. It's too much for me. Commentators say, what Job shows us. Because Job never gets the answers, right? We, we're that Monday morning quarterback. We see, we have the scripture, we see, you know, what was going on behind the scenes. Job never sees that. He comes to a point where he is questioning God. But what's interesting is God never really answers. He just reminds him who he is. He is the one who created. He created the Leviathan. He created the earth and the moon and the stars. He's all powerful and he's all knowing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they refused to bow down to other gods, were told they were going to get thrown into the fire, into the fiery furnace. It's one of those Sunday school stories, right? That we do if you have a flannel board or, or what have you. Or back when the veggie tales were in, they, they had it. But what was their response? Our God can save us. Our God can change this. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down. 
to this false god, even if our challenge as children of the living God, of brothers and sisters in Christ, is to be the even if people. Yes, sometimes God does miraculous things and heals. And sometimes people are taken away from us far too soon. Yesterday I attended a funeral for a 50-year-old man. He was athletic. He hiked. He did bike riding. He traveled. He lived well. He had a wife, a 13-year-old son, an 11-year-old son. He was well-respected in the workplace. He was a leader. And some of the things that people said as I talked with them is that, you know, in our business, anger rises up. And people feel passionately about them, and they, they can yell at, at people. And, and he never did that. He had a peace and a calm. He had a way of turning things. He empowered people to do well. And yet, as he was at a gym, on an exercise machine, a man who was seemingly healthy and living well, doing all the right things, suddenly died of a massive heart attack. And his wife and his kids and his colleagues are grieving. But as I sat in that service yesterday, the music that was selected pointed to God. The priest talked about how he was a man who spent time serving in that congregation. He loved well, and he served well, and he was generous. Even in the midst of the heartache, everyone was holding on to God's promises just as he had. I pray that as we make our journeys, no matter what we face, that we'll remember that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God in the Hebrew Scriptures as in the New Testament. He's the same God who hears our cries, the same God who outside of Lazarus' tomb wept, even knowing he was going to raise him from the dead. How do we trust God when it doesn't make sense, when we're hurting and overwhelmed? It's by remembering whose we are and who we are in Christ. It's remembering that God is with us even in that hard end, even in the hard times. That he loves with an everlasting love. If you continue on reading through Job, you'll see that he had some friends who came to visit him. And honestly, they probably look a lot like we do. They were the most help to him when they sat silently beside him and kept their mouths shut. They didn't offer advice. They were just there. We call it the ministry of presence. But then as he starts opening up and saying, you know, I thought I did everything. I, I don't understand. They were quick to step in, just like often we are. Let us help you figure out what your sin was, the reason that God did this to you. You, like me, if you're on social media, 
You may have seen comments regarding Hurricane Helene and people saying, well, you know, you live in a hurricane zone. What do you think's gonna happen? Hello. Tennessee and Appalachians, that's not a hurricane zone. Ashley's not a hurricane zone. And yet, this happened. We need to be careful that as we're seeking God, we're not trying to answer for him to ourselves or others. We're not trying to point fingers and say, well, you know, if you had given more to the church or spent more time, if you had gone out and, and given your life to be a missionary, these things wouldn't have happened. We've got to not be fault finders. God sent Jesus for each one of us while we were still sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so we need to recognize that yes, there are difficult things. Jesus died on the cross for us. Even Jesus didn't want to suffer. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Father, if it be your will, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours. Especially in 2024, in, in, in this century, we've come to expect that we will know the answers that everything has an, expla an explanation and we should be able to figure that out. Really, as one of the commentators said, it's more important to be in relationship with God than to have all the answers. Because the reality is, while we are still on earth, we're not going to have all the answers. But we know that God is with us that God's fighting for us. And no matter, even with everything that happens to Job, there are limits to what God puts. There are boundaries. In the end, you know, he is blessed beyond measure. He's restored without answers. But we know that as we journey through our lives, it's really, it's about faith. A friend shared how her cousin's son had been paralyzed from the neck down. Good Christian family, right? Why would this happen? Before that, her cousin's wife had had some injury or illness and had to be out of work. Then this accident happens to the son. And he's in rehab. And some family member died as well. And guess where his rehab is? Ashton. And yet, what her cousin did, what he sent out, was a, a Job-like statement. He texted out to the family that the Lord's grace is truly amazing, particularly when the storms of life hit. He promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. For the past month, he has met every need given us hope and encouragement for each moment, gave us the best of the best care and love. So we all experience this natural disaster. Remember, in his word, all he needed to do to the storm on the sea with the disciples, he lifted his hands and said, peace be still. He allows some storms, but remember, 
he controls them. And he loves us all. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. This man is having a Job-like experience. And some of you may be too. But may you remember that you're not alone. That you have brothers and sisters in Christ to walk alongside you, to encourage you and support you, to be there during those fiery trials, not to give answers, but to remind you that you're not alone. And most of all, may you focus in faith on the one who is, who was, and who is to come. His character, his love, his mercy, and his grace, even in the midst of suffering that nobody's willingly signing up for. May we hold on to him, and may we know that even when we don't have the strength to hold on to him, He's holding on to us. Amen. And amen.